Welcome to WebStyle Press. How to animate elements in React JS. In this video, I will show you how easy it is. After watching this video, you will be comfortable with using motion in not just JS, but this library can be used in any JavaScript framework and even with vanilla JavaScript. Let's jump in. So motion, a modern animation library for JavaScript and React. To install it, we can use npm install motion. Free, tiny, hybrid engine, production ready. And you can see level of animations that can be created using this library. Quick start. React. Quick start. First of all, if you go to quick start react guide, you see there are different methods to install for react 18 and react 19. For react 18, use npm install motion and then import it from motion slash react. But for React 19 and next 15, you'll have to install Framer Motion and use Import Motion from Framer Motion. Then use it in React. To use it in React, use motion.div. Animating a motion component is as straightforward as setting values via the animate prop. Animate scale to transition duration to motion button. Motion button initial animate while hover, while tap, on hover start. So in motion.div, div is not just for div element. Motion.div is a wrapper provided by the motion library that animates the element it is applied to, but it is not restricted to animating just div elements. It can wrap and animate any valid HTML element or React component. Easy, right? So here is my app. I am using React 18. So I will use npm install motion. Okay, so let's create few animation examples. Here is how we can create smooth entry and exit animations for a box using the motion library. We'll be using a use state hook. So import use state from React. Then import motion and animate presence from motion slash React. Animate presence is used to handle animations when elements are removed from or added to the screen. It ensures the exit animation runs smoothly before the element disappears from the DOM. So we'll be defining a state that will be is visible. It's a Boolean state, true or false. Div button on click set visible, not is visible. So this will toggle the state. This button will toggle the state. Then we'll simply use animate presence inside it. If is visible is true, then we'll use motion div. And inside motion dot div, we have got this box with the style margin top, width and height, background, color, and text align. So this is the button. Right now it toggles this box. We have to animate it. We have to apply entry and exit animation on this box. So for that, we will define that animation here. And the props can be like this. Initial from the start, its opacity should be zero. Scale should be less than original, less than one. It is 0.8. Animate where the animation should end. Opacity should be one. It should be visible. And its scale should be one to original size. And this is the exit animation. At the end of exit state, opacity should be zero and scale should be 0.8. So initial and exit are the same. This is the visible state that is defined in animate prop. And here we have transition duration that is 0.5. Let's try this. So it faded out and it fades in. So again, this button is toggling the visibility of the box or element. When clicked, it's updating the is visible state between true and false. Animate presence, as I mentioned earlier, is used to handle animation when elements are removed from or added to the screen. In these props, initial defines the starting state of the animation. Animate defines the final state of the animation when the element is visible. And exit defines the animation when the box is removed. And these are CSS properties. You can use any CSS property that you like. And this transition sets the duration of animation to 0.5 seconds. So how simple it is to create entry and exit animation with motion. 
Okay, let's see how can we drag and drop using motion. Here, we don't need this state. We don't need animate presence. We will need import motion from motion react. We don't need state here. We will use motion.div. Drag will be used as its prop. We also have while drag. That will help us style the element when it's being dragged. I have used a little bit of scale and rotation while element will be dragged. So this is the element with these styles, width, height, background, border radius, display, and color. These two props will make it draggable. When it's being dragged, it scales up a bit and rotates. It works great, but if I move it abruptly, it kind of goes out of the screen. To control that, we can use drag constraints to define the draggable boundaries like this drag constraints. I define top zero, left zero, right hundred and bottom hundred. So now it's kind of restricted within an invisible boundary that we have defined. We can also use ref if we don't want to use fixed boundary. We'll have to use use ref hook for that and an outer container that dragging element will respect. To do that, we'll import use ref from React. We will declare a const constraints ref that will use use ref. Initially, it's null. And now here for the drag constraint, instead of all of this, we'll use this constraints ref, a const that we have defined. But this is the draggable. It needs a boundary. It needs an outer container that we can add here. Like this. Now this is the outer container. It will have ref. Constraints ref. Now we can apply some styles. So that we can see the boundaries. And as you can see now the element respects this boundary and it will not go outside of this boundary. Amazing. Let's proceed with next example. That is scroll based animation. In this we will use use scroll and use transform hooks from motion. I will take an outer div with the height 400 bh and some background. It's just for styling and the inner div. In fact, it can be self-closing. I will apply these styles to it. So position fixed, top 40%, left 44%, some background, width and height. So this is the outer container and this is inner div. I want to animate or let's say scale the inner div as I scroll down. To do that, we are using use scroll hook. This use scroll hook is provided by motion that tracks the scroll position of the page or a specific element. When we call use scroll, it provides an object containing various properties, including scroll y progress, which represents the scroll progress as a value between zero and one. Zero means you are at the top of the scrollable area. One means you have reached the bottom of the scrollable area. Scroll Y progress is a reactive value that updates automatically as we scroll. We are destructuring scroll Y progress from use scroll. Then here we defined a function called scale and we used use transform hook provided by the motion. Use transform hook is mapping a reactive input value that is scroll Y progress to a new output range. So we are mapping the scroll Y progress range 0, 1 to the scale range. 1 to 2. As the scroll Y progress changes from 0 to 1 while scrolling, the scale value smoothly transitions from 1 to 2. The scroll Y progress value will be updated as the user scrolls. Use transform hook will listen to the changes in scroll Y progress and will recalculate the scale value accordingly. And now we will bound the scale value to this div. So we bound the value of scale property to inner div. It will cause this element to grow in size as we scroll down and it will shrink as we scroll up. Let's see. As we scroll down, the element grows in size. As we scroll up, 
the element shrinks. Amazing, right? Okay, so let's animate list items. Let's take an array of items that will be displayed in the list. And now let's map that array and display the items on the screen. So these are list items. And here is how we will animate these list items. We will change this div to motion.div. This one as well. Now we will add props for animation. So for the outer div, initial hidden and animate visible. Initial sets the initial state of the animation, which is defined by the variants. Let me continue, then I will explain it. So here we'll have variants. These hidden and visible, these are the variants. Hidden opacity zero, for the visible opacity one, and transition stagger children, 0.3. And then for this, for individual item, variants will be used here as well. Hidden opacity zero, Y20, I'm using Y20. And then for visible, opacity 1 so opacity one, 0 to opacity 1 and y value from 20 to 0 so if we reload this page it works like this and we can use x here as well reload it's like this now so what is this variant and initial animate and these variants hidden and visible so initial hidden initial sets the initial state of the animation this parent element starts in the hidden state which is defined in the variants animate defines the target state of the animation the parent div animates to the visible state this is the visible state that is defined its opacity will be one and transition will be stagger children 0.3 so in the hidden state, this div will be transparent with opacity zero. In the visible state, the parent will become fully visible with opacity one. Stagger children point three will ensure that child animations are triggered sequentially with a delay of 0.3 seconds between each. This will create a staggered effect where child elements will animate one after the other instead of all at once. The child starts off hidden with opacity zero and position 20 pixels below its original position. It will become fully visible and moves to its original position. That is why zero. The parent will control the timing of the children's animations through stagger children. When the parent will enter the visible state, it will trigger the visible state of each child sequentially, applying the respective variants. And the result is in front of you. Cool, right? Okay, so hover click animations are a piece of cake with this library. These are also called as gesture based animations. So import motion from motion react. And then we have this element on hover, on click. On hover, it grows in size. On click, it rotates and shrinks a bit in size. We declared its animations using CSS. This is the CSS scale 1.2, background color blue, and scale 0.8, rotate minus 15. But inside special props, those props are while hover and while tap. So on hover, this CSS should be applied. And if we tap on that element, this CSS should be applied. That's it. And this is just the style for that uh, circle. Actual thing is this. These are gesture based animations. Animations for hover, for tapping. So on hover, element is scaling and background color is changing. And if you click or tap, it scales down and rotates as defined in CSS styles. I will give you another example. That will be for layout animation. We will use state for that. So here, import use state from React. Then here we have defined that state is expanded. It will be true or false. It's a Boolean value. This is the button. On click set is expanded to not is expanded. So if is expanded true, show this, click to shrink. Otherwise show this, click to expand. This is our button. 
that will be toggling the state. Motion.dev will be self-closing. With these styles, height, background, border radius, color, display, cursor, text align, it will have a special prop that will be layout. And here's what we want. If we click at the button, its width should be changed. So its width is 100 pixels. If we click at this button, the state will be toggled from false to true. And this width will be 300 pixels. Let's see. Shrink, expand, shrink, expand. So this is the layout animation. So we used layout prop and then based on this state true or false, we can change styles of the element. Here we change the width. We can change any other CSS property that CSS allows us to change. So this is how simple it is to use animations in React. Lots of you guys won't try stuff because it looks complicated, but once you try it, it becomes easy. Furthermore, if you go to docs, you will see examples and a very good documentation here for everything, for animate, for scroll, in view, easing, delay, frame, stagger, spring, transform, for JavaScript and for React, layout, scroll, very good explanation and examples are here. So check these out. Okay, I hope it helped. Like, share, subscribe and I will see you in the next one.